All right. So last time we we're talking about regulation of erythropoiesis. Today we're going to talk about maturation of red blood cells, vitamin B12, and folic acid. So, bone marrow cells are the most rapidly growing and reproducing cells in the entire body. This is because they contain hematopoietic stem cells which are cells which can virtually divide into any cell of the blood lineage. And in the last couple of videos, we're focusing mainly on the erythroid lineage, which is the lineage which brings about the production of erythrocytes. So, how then do uh, red blood cells reach maturation? Firstly, they first have to undergo the process of erythropoiesis, which we talked about in the last videos, which is the process which occurs primarily in the bone marrow, in which a, com in which a hematopoietic stem cell commits to the myeloid lineage via proliferation and differentiation stimulated by transcriptional factors and in the last video we talked about erythropoietin which is produced by the kidney which activates this erythropoiesis by activating the committed <coughs> forming erythroblast unit right into uh, the pro erythroblast and so on so this erythropoiesis occurs if we have firstly transcriptional factors and two very important hormones which are vitamin b12 and folic acids these uh, vitamins are important for the final maturation of red blood cells right <coughs> And uh, they are required for the synthesis of thymidine, one of the essential blooding blocks of DNA. So one might ask, why is DNA necessary for the production of red blood cells? We see that DNA contains the genetic instructions and genes required for erythropoiesis. Right? This DNA is actually even found in the hematopoietic stem cell and is necessary and it directs the, the proliferation and differentiation of this erythroid lineage. So if there is no or if there is um, malfunctioning of this DNA, we see that there is a disturbance in the proliferation and differentiation of this myeloid lineage right so um, maturation and production of these red blood cells is therefore affected by one's personal nutritional status right this is because um, the process of uh, maturation of red blood cells requires vitamin b12 and folic acid which are both vitamins, right? And these vitamins are essential vitamins, which means that they are not uh, manufactured in high quantities in the body. Therefore, we have to intake them exogenously into the body, right? So, what then are the consequences? What then are the consequences of... Um, absence of folic acid or vitamin b12 we see that lack of either of these vitamins will result in abnormal or diminished dna which will lead to failure of nuclear metabolism and cell division cells red blood cells which are produced are larger than normal they are described to be microcytes and are oval in shape as we can see in this in this diagram right so these cells they have a normal oxygen carrying capacity but a reduced half-life 
Now, uh, a bit of a detail on vitamin B12. So vitamin B12, it's uh, obtained uh, from sources such as meat, eggs, and dairy products, which we can see in this diagram. It's rich in meat, eggs, and dairy products. And it is stored in the liver between 3 to 5 milligrams and about 1 to 3 micrograms of vitamin B12 is required a day. Hence, stores last for approximately 3 years. Now, let's say one intakes this uh, vitamin B12, right, and it becomes dietary B12. How then, how then does it move um, via the gastrointestinal tract? How does the gastrointestinal intestinal tract handle vitamin B12 and eventually absorb it into the blood? So this is how uh, it's, it moves, right? It is also called cyanocobamylin or CBL. So what happens is dietary B12 binds to salivary B12 binding protein or ARA binder hepatocorin right which you can see here as ARA so this then forms a complex called ARA B12 complex which is then transported to the duodenum to the duodenum right and digested and processed right by pancreatic proteases right which would then lead to the release of cobamylin that is cbl so this cbl then binds to intrinsic factors in the duodenum and forms a complex called the intrinsic intrinsic factor bitcoff complex which then passes to the distal ileum and attaches um, attaches to the receptors of this ileum that is the enterocytes the lining of uh, the ileum is called enterocytes uh, that is uh, a singular cell and this binding right it will lead to its absorption how this um, CBL with uh, intrinsic factor is moved into the enterocyte and in the enterocyte it breaks down this complex into CBL and this CBL then binds to transcobamylin which is a transporter uh, protein inside the enterocytes so after it binds to transcobamylin it is now ready to be delivered or it is now delivered to the liver where it is stored in other parts of the body. And you can see here it is transported also to the pronomoblast, right? Which is a precursor immature red blood cell, right? So we see that for this precursor to function, it requires a CBL. Or vitamin B12 and also it is stored in the liver so what then can call can be the cause of vitamin B12 deficiency um, gastric bypass surgery which you can see here uh, which is a procedure in which uh, we create a pouch right over the stomach and this pouch it bypasses the stomach and it's usually uh, done by people who are obese right so as to reduce the intake of food and this bypass right uh, it then leads to it bypasses the stomach and the duodenum and attaches again to the small intestines right 
and we see that this bypass it reduces b12 absorption right why it reduces the um, the number of um b12 absorption sites as we know that in the stomach as we can see in this uh, in the latter video uh, in the former video in the stomach that's where we find uh this intrinsic factor in the ara bind right and also lack of intrinsic factors in the stomach can also be a cause of vitamin b12 deficiency as the intrinsic factors are the ones which transport uh, the vitamin b12 into the enterocytes of the small intestines and also strict vegetarians or vegan diets right uh, can also be a cause of vitamin b12 deficiency as vitamin b12 is mainly found in animal products uh, such as the diagram I showed you with uh, meat, fish, eggs, and dietary products. Also, uh, those who have pernicious anemia, which is an autoimmune condition where antibodies are produced against intrinsic factors, um, also is a cause of vitamin B12 deficiency. Since uh, these antibodies work against intrinsic factors, and we know that the intrinsic factors are the ones which transport uh, COBA, transport vitamin B12 and lead uh, to its absorption. So when there is pernicious anemia, uh, there is um, prevention of vitamin B12 absorption since we have destroyed the intrinsic factors by our antibodies. The cause being unknown is an autoimmune disease. Another condition is a uh, removal of the distal ileum, right? If you remove the distal ileum or there is damage to the distal or the terminal ileum, we see that there will no longer be absorption of uh, vitamin B12 and its transportation. That also can be another cause of its deficiency. Now, Again, a detailed look on folate or folic acid, we see that uh, deficiency is uncommon. So yeah, you can be happy about that. And also, the main data resources are uncooked foods, uh, uncooked vegetables and fruits, as we can see in this diagram, tomatoes, avocados, and so on. And uh it is destroyed by cooking for at least 10 to 15 minutes, right? Those who like overcooking their uh, vegetables are at risk of developing a uh, deficiency in uh, vitamin, in folic acid. And also, a dietary form is predominantly in the polyglutamate form. Yes, I know that most people don't know. Uh, what the polyglutamate form is i'll show you in the next slide and after um, it's absorbed in the polyglutamate form is then split to form monoglutamates for absorption right so uh, this is the polyglutamate form which is the natural form in which we uh, we intake uh, folate or folic acid so we see that uh, folate can only be absorbed into the enterocytes when it's in the monoglutamate form, right? So we have first to cleave it to absorb it into our into the bloodstream and eventually into the bone marrow in which it is used by uh, pre pre progenitor cells, right? In the erythroid lineage, right? And also conversion is decreased by acid foods, uh, for example, substances found in beans. So those who love eating acidic foods, uh, you, are risk, you are at risk of developing folic acid deficiency. And then for those who are needs, right, 
uh, we see that um, phenotin decreases um, folate absorption and also methotrexate it inhibits absorption this is because um, these are okay or simply uh, phenotin and methotrexate they are medications which are in intaked by people who have um, who suffer from epilepsy or or those are uh, fits right they are anti convulsants or they are anti um, fits they, they, they prevent uh, those checking movements right so yeah that's the end of this video I hope you understood in the next video we're going to talk about iron metabolism and uh, it's yeah iron metabolism its formation and um, destruction so thank you see you in the next video